The old prison transport bus rumbles down the long driveway leading to Ironwood Penitentiary, its worn tires kicking up clouds of dust. 18-year-old Katie Davis leans her head against the dirty window, watching as the maximum security prison comes into view through the gloom. The bus passes under a wrought iron archway bearing the words, Ironwood Penitentiary. Katie feels a chill run through her. She grips the edges of her seat tightly as the bus pulls up to the main gates, imposing steel bars topped with coils of razor wire. With a loud metallic groan, the gates slowly swing open, allowing the bus to pass through. Katie swallows hard, realizing there's no turning back now. The bus comes to a stop in a fenced-in receiving area. This is it. Katie takes a few deep breaths, trying to prepare herself for whatever is to come. Heavy footsteps approach the door. Katie tenses, her heart pounding as the locks disengage with an ominous thunk. The door swings open, letting in a blast of cold November air. End of the line, convicts, a guard bellows from outside. Shakily, Katie rises with the others. She has arrived at Ironwood Penitentiary. Her new life as an inmate is about to begin. The bus doors wheeze open. Out now! The guard orders gruffly. Katie joins the line of women shuffling toward the exit. Descending the bus stairs on shaky legs, Katie squints as her eyes adjust to the harsh sunlight. She takes in the bleak prison building surrounding her. Katie's worn shoes hit the cracked concrete below. She breathes deeply, trying to steady her rattled nerves. This is her new reality now. As Katie walks away from the bus, she glances back over her shoulder. The outside world already feels so far away somehow. Here's a more detailed rewrite of that section. As Katie steps off the bus, a stern-looking female guard seizes her roughly by the arm. The guard's fingernails dig sharply into Katie's skin. She winces but doesn't make a sound. With a bruising grip, the guard pulls Katie toward the looming entrance gates of the prison. Katie feels her pulse begin to quicken. She anxiously eyes the foreboding concrete walls topped with coils of razor wire. The guard yanks Katie closer to the gates. Katie's breath catches in her throat as they swing slowly open. She can now see inside the grim courtyard between the prison blocks. Inmates in beige uniforms shuffle past, heads down. Katie instinctively tries to pull back, but the guard's hold only tightens. Keep moving, inmate, she orders gruffly. Swallowing down her rising panic, Katie forces her reluctant feet to keep walking forward. The guard marches Katie into a small concrete room labeled intake. Katie looks around nervously at the guards stationed inside. Strip, the guard orders. Katie hesitates before slowly removing her clothes under their watchful gazes. Now naked, Katie shivers as they take away her personal clothes and inspect them closely, searching for any contraband. One guard rifles through Katie's purse and pulls out her ID, makeup, and family photos. Katie aches as these last traces of her past self are taken. They hand her a scratchy beige uniform and watch closely as Katie dresses. She feels their eyes crawling over her and has to fight back tears. A guard barks at Katie to hold out her hands and feet. He locks metal cuffs tightly around her wrists and ankles. They chafe against her skin. The guard grabs Katie's arm and leads her down the hall into a small concrete room labeled Prison Barber. Katie's stomach drops. Inside, a male barber orders Katie to sit in the metal chair in the center. As straps are buckled around her, Katie begins trembling. Please don't do this, Katie begs. But the barber just smirks and turns on the electric clippers. The buzzing fills Katie's ears. Katie thrashes against the restraints as the barber forces her head down and begins shearing off her long, auburn hair. Tears spill down her cheeks. She watches in horror as clump after clump of her hair falls to the floor. In minutes, Katie's head is shorn down to the scalp. Katie thrashes against the restraints as the buzzing clippers shear off clump after clump of her auburn hair. She watches them fall to the floor with building horror. The barber forces Katie's head down and mows the clippers roughly across her scalp, leaving just stubble behind. 
Katie squeezes her eyes shut, unable to watch. Almost done, the barber mutters. Katie feels the cold metal of the clippers grazing her temple, her neck, behind her ears. She trembles uncontrollably, tears streaming down her face. In just minutes, all of Katie's hair is gone. Her head has been shorn completely bald. The barber pumps shaving cream into his palm and spreads it across Katie's sensitive scalp. Katie whimpers, knowing what's coming next. Using a straight razor, he carefully shaves away the last remnants of stubble, leaving Katie's head smooth and bare. The soap stings her raw skin. Rinsing off the remaining foam with a wet towel, the barber tilts Katie's chin up to admire his handiwork. She is now starkly, undeniably bald. Seeing her shaved head reflected back in the mirror, Katie's chest heaves with sobs. Stripped of her hair, she feels less than human. The guard finally unfastens the restraints, freeing Katie from the barber chair. She continues sobbing, unable to stop touching her now bald head. On your feet, convict, the guard orders. Katie stands on shaky legs, sniffling and wiping her wet cheeks. The barber begins sweeping up the piles of Katie's shorn auburn hair from the floor. Okay, inmate 18761, he says. I'll be seeing you back here in three days. Katie's head jerks up, eyes wide with horror. What? She stammers. Why? Fresh tears threaten to spill. To keep that head shaved smooth, of course, the barber replies casually. Can't have you ladies trying to grow your hair out now, can we? Katie's shoulders slump in despair. Every three days from now on, she'll be forced back into this chair to have her head reshaved. The fight leaves Katie's body. She simply nods mutedly at the barber's words, too emotionally drained now to argue or plead. The guard grips Katie's arm and leads her out of the barber shop back down the hall. Katie walks in a daze, feeling her bald head. So what did you do to end up in this place anyway, convict? The guard asks gruffly. Katie stays silent, eyes downcast. The guard stops and grabs Katie's chin, forcing her to look up. I asked you a question, inmate, he barks. What are you in for? Katie's voice comes out raspy and timid. Armed robbery, she answers. My sentence is five years. She braces herself for the guard's reaction. The guard seizes Katie's arm in a bruising grip. An armed robber, huh? You think you're some kind of tough criminal? He snarls. Katie shakes her head, eyes down. No, sir, she stammers. I just did what I had to survive. Her words are cut off as the guard slaps her hard across the face. Katie cries out in pain and shock. I don't want to hear your pathetic excuses, the guard roars down at Katie. In here, you'll pay your debt to society through hard labor. He seizes Katie by the collar of her uniform and drags her toward the door. Katie stumbles along, heart pounding with dread. Katie is marched down the hall into a steamy, noisy kitchen area. Hunched figures in inmate uniforms labor over piles of vegetables. The guard shoves Katie toward a peeler and a mountain of potatoes. Get peeling, convict! He barks. I want every last one done by dawn. Trembling, Katie picks up the first brown, dirt-encrusted potato. The peeler is dull, requiring immense effort to scrape off the skin. As Katie struggles through peeling potato after potato, the guard lurks close behind, watching for any sign of slacking. After hours of the monotonous motion, Katie's fingers cramp and her wrists burn but she doesn't dare stop, knowing the punishment will be severe. The guard notices Katie wincing in pain. Keep working, he yells right in her ear, making her flinch. Tears leak from Katie's eyes, but she bites her tongue to stay silent. She peels faster, even as the peeler slices her raw, bleeding fingers. The hours drag on at an agonizing pace. But Katie pushes through the misery, fueled by her will to overcome whatever torment they inflict. Katie's fingers are cramped and bleeding from hours of potato peeling. Her back screams in protest as she forces herself to keep working.